I have need for you on the master's sail barge, and I think you'll fill in nicely. <laughs> I'm waiting for Lucasfilm to do the making of as a comedy of Star Wars, like do that movie behind the scenes, like a, oh, you know, yeah. I don't know, I don't know who you'd cast as a young Lucas, but uh, there's people out there that'll deliver it. I thought you were going to say who would you cast as a young Simon Williamson. Well, that's that's a very difficult <laughs> question to answer, Simon, because Simon has such a unique skill set on such a legendary <laughs> landscape of work that it's it's almost impossible. I mean, there's no young Lawrence Olivier to do it. Um, <laughs> who would you get as a young who would simon williamson cast as a young simon mm. williamson oh god difficult to say oh would it, yeah See, uh, challenging yeah challenging. it's difficult it's difficult yeah i mean who's got the chops to deliver what simon deli what simon williamson can do just well, walking who can, down who the can street waggle, who can waggle a puppet yes yeah. as well yeah, yeah. So. who who can look unappreciated in skill set caliber when handed a slug with so much effectiveness that he gets upgraded to max rebo in an instant <laughs> yes <laughs> you know and who delivers max rebo with so much magic that it becomes a toy line a shirt t-shirt uh yes a, 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 it's probably a cocktail drink in some places uh, there was a know. magazine a film magazine that came out one month and it had about four pictures on the front cover and one of them was a big close up of Max Rebo when he does that little wave when he's beating time for the band. So it was, I was on, I think that was on it. Max Rebo was on it. And then a still of Sean Connery, who'd come back for Never Say Never. Mm -hmm. Mistake. And it might have been, it might have been David Bowie and Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, because these are all upcoming films in that period. And I thought I'm a great big blue thing on the cover with these um, with these wonderful people like Sean Connery and um, David. Hell Bally. yes, you are. Hell yes, you and are. And it's a close up, so I know I'm still in the movie, and I get a little at least one little moment. So that was very gratifying and exciting. I hope that covers frame someplace. Uh, it's yeah, funny. It's probably, you know it's probably gathering dust in some folder somewhere. I bet in you can extremely I, untidy place. I bet you can download a copy of it somewhere on on the net. But I, mm. uh, you know, it's funny because Connery shouldn't have come back for Never Say Never. I don't know why. I think he just did that to stick his middle finger up at the former Bond producers. But, um, but it, I just posted a highlight from Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, which was a movie a lot of people still don't know, and it got a tremendous wow. reaction, mostly in wow. inquiries like, "What movie is this from?" Yes. Um, and we just reached out to the composer of that, who's the villain in that movie. Ryuchi oh. Sakamoto. Yeah. Oh, who's wonderful music. Unreal. He's battling cancer. We were trying to get him for our oh, Christmas no. event. This, the same one we invited you to, um, yeah. to play Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence on the piano to a video of some of the charity work my daughter does. But, uh, you oh. know, it just, it's, it's, it's funny. It's like you, you that there, there was a moment in time for some of us that were, you know, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, Never Say Never, Return of the Jedi, when the movie still had the magic. I remember people going to see movies just to see the new Star Wars trailer. They did not care about the movie. They paid to see the new Return of the Jedi trailer. Yeah. You know, and it was like, wow. 
oh wow and the movies you know they kept going to new places and new tricks and you know i mean look at the third movie compared to the first movie with the speed bikes and the mm. it's just like you know in the the effects in the briefing room where they go from like this atari looking breakdown to like this you know death star like cyber model and just all these it just you know it's like it was like the enthusiasm for that movie you must have mm. been going nuts simon you must have really been pulling your hair out going well I'll either murder an editor when this movie comes out <laughs> <laughs> or I'll, I'll be sending him a Christmas basket for the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean, for any, for anybody um, listening, who's an actor and has just started working on film and television. One of the things you, uh, you learn pretty early on is you, you remember every detail of the, the shoot on the first ever shoot you're involved in so you'll think well they took a shot of me reacting to that line they took a shot of this so mm. you've, you've created in your mind what it'll look like and then it comes on tv or whatever and it's over like that and you think why didn't they use the cloak why it's on the other guy and it's just my voice and oh end of my line and because but they, they're making a choice they shoot everything but you just remember the bits that you're in but the final thing is you're often the offstage voice for at least half the line. That's or the way it goes. Shot. Welcome yeah. to be welcome to being a professional. <laughs> Unfortunately, as a director will remind us, it's not all about us. 